Hello everyone, this is Bishop Deb. I'm coming to you live from somewhere near the river, Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario. I'm a little bit early for a, a renewal of vows ceremony, and so I thought I'd take the chance to come down and and just see what's happening down at the river. It is wild down here. The, uh, the wind is just whipping the waves, and over by the little gazebo, there's actually um, a building ice wall. Um, as the waves crash in and it's below freezing, it sort of just stays. And so now we've got this very wonderful um, addition. It's not going to last very long, but it's uh, just like a, a bank of, of snow and ice that goes out into the river. And I'm hoping nobody steps on it because I don't think it's very sound. It's only been there temporarily. But it is wild. It's windy down here. The birds are trying to fly against the, the headwinds. And it's uh, it's a place where a lot of the gulls and the geese gather. And I'm watching them just sort of surfing on the currents. It's quite... They're quite uh, adept at all this. Anyway, I hope you had a wonderful couple of days. It's been very stormy here. We got socked with winter in one day, they're calling it. Um we've had a very mild winter and the last few days we've probably seen a couple of feet of snow so it's winter and everybody you know people are taking it in stride we can't really complain we didn't really have much of one so far and it's the middle of March it's not going to be like this for much longer so we're enjoying it as much as we can I'm thinking about the unpredictability of Mother Nature. We just, this, you know, a lot of things we can't control. The old saying is death and taxes. We can't control the weather either. I think of the pioneers who built this nation and built, you know, our countries. And when I think of the the bugs in the summer and the severe winters they had to deal with, it's astounding to me that any of them survived. It's it's a testimony to the hardiness of the of humans, I guess, but that's in us too. You know, our ancestors forged ahead and and so for for us here in Canada, when it snows or when it's icy, it's just the way it is. We we weather it through. We might not like it much, but um, there are a lot of happy kids who receive toboggans and sleds at Christmas who are probably on a hill somewhere enjoying it today. It's March break. So, you know, everything every, everything has a silver lining. Even two feet of snow brings happy kids. It brings a lot of sore arms and backs, too, from shuffling. But if everything's in perspective. So, as we continue through Lent, on days like this, I and over the last few days, I've been thinking a lot of those who are out in this who have to work in it you know replacing power lines or or the people you know the, the cops the ambulance drivers the ATMs the paramedics all the people that really don't have much choice it's part of their job wind or rain or shine construction folks and also those who are in the streets those who have no homes and shelters I I pray for them so hard over days like this where you know I, I worry like where are you where are you sleeping have you find shelter or send angels out to gather them and take them to safe places and it's a good Lenten practice if you don't already do this to think about your your food banks in your areas to think about your neighborhood uh, community places that bring people in it from out of the cold and contribute however you can through money, volunteering, bringing food. Um, I, I have a number of friends that, that would go downtown in their van and just make sure that everybody was safe. You know, they're sleeping on grates, open grates. They're sleeping in... Oh, there was a goose. They're sleeping in, um, you know, doorways and, and corners out of the wind. And they would find them and bring them blankets or offer to bring them to a shelter that is just heroic as far as I'm concerned that kind of care and attention we don't have to go to that extreme but we 
are all in this together. We're all brothers and sisters together. And when somebody is affected, we are all affected in a way. So I commend that to your Lenten experience and, and reflection. How can you help your neighbor? How can you reach out in the name of love and make somebody's life a little better, a little brighter? Well, I've got to get to my elopement, but let's have a prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of opportunities to help others by our life, by our example. We know that we are all together on this planet and you are creator of all. And so all are our brothers and sisters. We pray this day that you would protect all who are homeless, all who are in any kind of need. We ask that you would help us in our lives to be comfortable, to recognize our blessings, to know that with you all things are indeed possible. We ask today that you enlighten hearts all around the world, that those who would shut things down or make things difficult or be inspired by greed or avarice or malice, be moved by our love, by the collective love in this planet. We pray that those who are facing dire circumstances, who have nowhere to turn, would be rescued and saved and brought to safe haven. We ask that those who are experiencing war and violence and oppression across the planet would find happier times, would find safety, would find friendly arms to lift them and bring them to safer places. In all things we are aware of our blessings and our connection and our mandate, our human date, to reach out and help those around us. May we be so inspired this day. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Well, I've had a couple of flybys by geese. Maybe the car is kind of, maybe they're being territorial. I'm not sure. But anyway, it was kind of fun to see them fly over the car. I will let you get on with your day. I will get to my ceremony and I wish you every blessing. Take care. Bye.